This lesson is for section 9.2 on circles. Our objective for today is to be able to write and graph equations of circles. Now up first, I actually want to make sure that we review a specific skill from first semester, and that's completing the square. So algebraically, when you complete the square, you're trying to take something that is not a perfect square and turn it into something that is a perfect square. So here in this example, we have x squared plus 12x equals negative 21. Now, most of you guys are going to want to move that negative 21 to the other side, and you don't. You actually keep it exactly where it's at. What we're going to do is cut this middle term here in half. Okay, so if we cut that in half, we would end up with 6, and then we're going to square that value. Okay, so that's what it means to complete the square. We're turning that into x squared plus 12x plus 36 now. Okay. This has now just created a perfect square. On the left-hand side here, we'd have x plus 6 squared. However, on the right-hand side, we have to make sure we balance the equation. We can't just add 36 to the left-hand side. We have to make sure that we add 36 to the other side. So here we're balancing the equation. So once again, we cut this term here in half, and we square it. We add it to one side, and we have to make sure we add it to the other. So now we have... Um, a perfect square here on the left hand side because if I factor x squared plus 12x plus 36 I end up with x plus 6 squared and on the right hand side I have equals 15. Okay so now we can move on to the definition of a circle. A circle is not just something that's round and two-dimensional it actually has a formal definition for it so um, a circle is the set of all points that are equidistant and the word equidistant means equal distance away from something. So equidistant, hopefully I spelled that right, um, that are equidistant from a fixed point, meaning that point should not move. And we call it the center. So I think that makes a lot of sense because here we're looking at a fixed point and then every single point equidistant from that point. Okay, now that equidistant um, measure would be considered the radius right of the circle okay now next up what I want to do is to find the distance between our center HK depicted in this graph here and a point any point on the graph of that circle okay so I can't really see the distance formula up here but that's alright let's just make HK X1 Y1 okay and this XY that arbitrary point is just gonna be X2 Y2 so if we want to find the distance here the distance is going to be the square root, remember that's distance dan's toupee, of the x values, the difference between the x values squared, and the y values squared. So, oops, let's fill this in, and I'm going to use the correct notation here. I'm going to use um, x2 minus x1, okay? So I'm going to take x minus h, and I square them. Then I'll take the y2 minus y1, in this case y minus k, and I will square that as well. So this is the distance between HK and XY. So really that's the radius, right? Let me replace that D here with R because that's actually the radius, the distance between HK and XY. Now the standard form for the equation of a circle actually comes from this idea. Here we found the distance, uh, which is the radius between the, the point on a circle and our center. But if we square both sides here, if I square both sides of this, I end up with r squared equaling on the right hand side that radical drops and leaves me with the inside. So I have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. So this is actually the equation of a circle. This is the standard form. So let's write this out here. This is really important. You need to make sure you have this one memorized. We have r squared is equal to x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, Okay, where h comma k is the center of your circle and R is the radius. Okay, so let's begin with our first skill which is to graph circles. Now in order to graph a circle you want to make sure that you can find the center and the radius from the equation and then we'll try to graph it. So let's start with our first example here. We have x squared plus y squared equals 36. Now in this case sometimes it trips up students because you don't see a minus something and um, I think that gets a little confusing. But if you want to rewrite that, write that as x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared, okay? Then clearly you can see here that the center would be at 0, 0. So I'm going to draw in that center, okay? Now the radius is not 36. Remember this value here is r squared. 
So it's your radius squared. So in this case, my radius should be six. Obviously, if I solve that, I would get positive or negative six, but we throw out the negative because we're looking at a radius and it's a distance. So we're gonna use six. So what we do to graph this, it's just a real quick sketch. We're gonna go up six units, right six units, down six units, and left six units, and then we do our best to draw a circle that contains those points. That's not too shabby. Okay, so that's how we would graph our circle. Now, example B here is a little different because of that inequality, but we'll get to that in a second. For right now, let's just identify the center and the radius. So the center here, remember, it's, it's the opposite of H, because if you look up here, it's X minus H squared. So we're going to take a positive 4, that's our X coordinate, and the Y coordinate here will be negative 2. So our center is at positive 4, negative 2. You actually have to take the opposite signs of the values on the inside of the parentheses. So if I put my center at 4, negative 2, it'd be right here, okay? And then my radius here, r squared is 49, so r is going to be 7. So I want to go up 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, to the left 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, down 7, so I'd be at negative 9, and to the right 7, so I should be at 11 out here. Okay, now before I connect these points, um, Let's talk about that inequality symbol. When you draw a line like y is less than 3x plus 2, remember if you were to graph something like that, you have um, a line that's dashed because you're missing the equals to underneath, but it's a, it's a dashed line, and in this case we'd be um, graphing it below the line because it's all values that are less than that value. Remember, we could test a point and do all that kind of stuff to figure out which, which region we would shade, but um, for this particular graph, it's a circle. So when we have that greater than or equal to symbol, we're going to have solid line or solid um, curve connecting these points. That's way worse of a circle. That's pretty ugly. But now we have to think about how we're going to shade it. Now, I want you to pick a specific point to test to determine if you're going to shade on the inside or on the outside of this circle. The circle represents a boundary, just like um, in that graph I was showing you before. If you shade below, that means that these points satisfy your original inequality. The points above the line do not satisfy the inequality. So we need to figure out where our points, um, or which side, either on the inside or on the outside, where the points will satisfy this original inequality. So we're going to test um, a point, and that point will always be the center. It's the easiest point to test because if you plug in 4 for x and negative 2 for y, you end up with 0 plus 0. So we'll always get 0 on one side. So if I test that center, this is saying 0 is greater than or equal to 49. Clearly this is false, right? So in other words, the points on the inside of the circle do not satisfy the inequality, so we will shade on the outside of the circle. These represent all of the points that do satisfy your original inequality. Okay, so this is the graph for this particular inequality here. Now, very similar strategy for C. You want to find your center. Center is going to be at negative 1, positive 5. So I graph negative 1, positive 5 here. I have a radius of 5. So I'm going to go up 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, down 5 units. Right 5 units. And left 5 units. Oops, I'd be at negative 6. Okay. Now, this time I will have a dashed circle because it's a less than symbol so I'm going to draw that in like so when I pick my test point it should be well that's still pretty bad of a circle did I count right one two three four five I did I don't know why it's so ugly um, all right now I want to test the center so if I plug in negative one five remember this ends up being zero plus zero so I have 0 is less than 25. Is that true? Yes it is. 0 is less than 25 which means now I shade the inside where the center is because all of these points satisfy this inequality. Okay, our second objective is to be able to write an equation of a circle with specific information given to you. Now our very first example is pretty much a no-brainer. Um, it tells you what the center is, it gives you the radius. So you're going to plug it into the equation x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. Now, the hard part, I guess, is just memorizing the equation, um, which really is a derivation of the distance formula, so it's not too bad to try to memorize this, but it can get tricky when you have to plug in negative values. Something like negative 8, when it gets plugged into this equation here, ends up being x plus 8. 
Okay, so you have to be really careful here with your signs. So I should have x plus 8 squared plus y minus 7 squared. Okay, and then I'm going to square my radius. A lot of people forget to do this part, so we square, 20, um, square 5 to get 25. So this is the equation of a circle with this particular information. Okay, question three is slightly trickier because this time they only give you a center and then another point that your circle passes through. So if I were to graph this, now it doesn't have to be an accurate sketch because I'm just trying to get, my, get you guys an idea of what's going on here. You've got a center at five, negative nine, and then somewhere on the circle is another point, 10, negative three. And like I said, it doesn't matter where you put 10, negative three, you could put it down here, whatever. Because all you really are interested in is figuring out what the radius of this circle should be. Because remember, to um, write an equation of a circle, you need the radius and you need the center. You've already got one, you've got the center, now all that you have left to do is figure out what the radius is. Well, to find that radius, you're just looking at the distance between two points. We need to find first the distance between 5, negative 9 and 10, negative 3, so that we can use that as the radius for our circle. So if we use that trick I showed you guys yesterday, so we don't have to do all these calculations by hand all the time, you're going to take the difference between your x values, which is 5, and square that. Then take the difference between your y values. In this case, the difference between negative 9 and negative 3 is only 6 units. Remember, it's positive because it's just a distance between them. And then I square that. I'll add that together and take the square root. So I have the square root of 25 plus 36, which is the square root of, let's see, is that 61? So when I write my equation now, I'm going to use 5, negative 9 as my center and my radius is root 61, okay? Keep that in mind because we actually have to square that value when we um, write the equation of the circle. So we have to make sure we square r, r here. So in this case, we'd get 61 equals, we have to take x minus h and square that, plus y minus k and square that. So we have x plus, I'm sorry, x minus five because it's a positive five, and then y plus nine because it's negative nine. All right, so there is the equation of the circle for number three. Okay, in question four, I'm given pretty limited information because all they tell me is that the endpoints of the diameter are at zero, six, and eight, zero. So if I were to graph this, I'm just doing a rough sketch, but basically I have two coordinates that lie on the circle, but they represent um, the endpoints of a diameter. Okay, so in other words, we're missing the radius and we are also missing the center. Okay, we can't use either of those points as the center. But what we can do is figure out where that center is because that just represents the midpoint between those two endpoints. So that's what we're gonna find first. Let's find the midpoint of zero, six, and eight, zero. Okay, now um, without relying on the formula, remember to find a midpoint, you're just averaging your x's and averaging your y's. So if I average zero and eight, I would add zero plus eight and I divide it by two to get four. Then I do the same thing for six and zero here, and I would end up with three. So there's my center. The center is at four, three. Now to find the radius, this is where some students have a little bit of trouble um, because they'll find the distance between the endpoints, which is the correct thing to do here. We need to find the distance between zero, six, and eight, zero. But then they forget to cut it in half. Remember, that represents, the distance here represents the diameter of the circle, and the radius is half the diameter. So we'll have to make sure we cut this number, the distance between um, those two points, we'll have to cut that in half. So let's find the distance um, between 0, 6, and 8, 0. Let's use our shortcut. So we'll find the difference uh, between 0 and 8, which is 8, and then square it. So we get 8 squared plus um, 6 minus 0 squared. Okay, and we'll take the square root of that value. So we have 64 plus 36. So we, we're taking the square root of 100, so we get 10. Now this is the diameter. Okay, and um, like I said, one area that people make mistakes on is that they forget that one last piece. They're not meticulous enough here and they forget to cut that in half. So this means that the radius is actually five. Okay, so um, I don't know why I wrote it like that. Let's do r is equal to five. Okay, so if we are going to write the equation of this circle, we're going to take x minus 4 and square that. Then we'll add y minus 3 and square that. Set that equal to our radius squared, which is going to be 25. All right, so there's my final answer. Now, I didn't actually make these very difficult because I could have made this a little bit trickier by um, asking you to square something like 2 root 5 
for the radius. So let's say we got a radius of 2 root 5. When you square that, a lot of students will forget to square both terms, so you would get 4 times 5. So just those little details here um, you know, are really important, okay? Okay, in the final part of our lesson, I think we're working on probably our toughest skill so far. We are going to write an equation of a circle in standard form when we're given an equation that's not in a very nice form for us. So what we need to do is make this look more like this. Okay. Now in order to do that, if you notice here, you've got perfect squares. We're going to complete the square. That's why we worked on that skill at the very beginning of the lesson Okay, as an intro. We want to be able to complete the square here. All right, so let's work on that. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do is move the constant term to the right-hand side. If you leave the constant there, you're probably going to get really confused, so always make sure you move that constant to the right-hand side. Now, I'm going to rearrange the, the terms a little bit, too, so that I can write them out a little nicer. I'm going to put x squared all the way to the left, and then the 12x will come after it. Okay, I'm going to leave myself a nice big space here. So then I have plus y squared, and I'm going to write the 10y after that term, and then another space, and then the 20. So really, I haven't changed anything quite yet. I've only added the 20 to the other side and then spaced out my terms and kind of, re kind of rearranged them to be a little bit nicer for myself. Okay, now we're going to work on the actual completing the square part. Remember, to complete the square, you take the linear term, in this case 12x, we cut that in half, so we would get 6, and then we square that number, so we get plus 36. We need to add that to the other side, though, to balance our equation. You can't just add 36 on one side, so we need to make sure we add 36 over here. Now, we complete the square again, this time for the y term. So we take negative 10y, we cut that in half, we would get negative 5, we square it, and we get positive 25. Again, um, you always get a positive value here, because whenever you square a negative or a positive, you'll still get a positive. So make sure you always are adding a number and never subtracting something. Now on the other side, make sure you do balance. Like I said, that's something where students will forget and they uh, make little mistakes and then when they go to graph something, it doesn't quite make sense to them. So you make sure you are always balancing your equation. Okay, so the whole point of doing this, completing the square, is so that we can create a perfect square because here I can factor that and I can call that x plus 6 squared. And for these terms here, if I factor, I have another perfect square, y minus 5 squared. So I've basically forced my equation to look more like that standard form, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, okay? And then the only thing I've left to do now is add those terms together, and I get 81, all right? So there's my r squared. So in this problem, and you don't have to do this on every single problem, but I just think it's good to practice here, the center for that equation is going to be negative 6, 5, so that's the center of your circle. And the radius here would be 9. We take the square root of 81. Okay, the very last question of the lesson is sometimes a little bit trickier for students because here you'll notice that um, there is no x term. There's only an x squared term here. So let's work first on just trying to rearrange the terms, all right? So we'll take the x squared, and normally we would put the x right after that, but since there isn't one, I'm going to put the y squared here, and then minus 8y. And then I'm going to leave myself some space, and I make sure I move that 9 to the other side. Okay, so here's why it's a little confusing. You look at the x squared, and you're not sure how to complete the square here. But remember, all you need to do is get it in the form x minus h squared. And right now, that actually is already in that form. It's already a perfect square on its own. If you write it like this, maybe it's a little bit easier to see. But x squared is already a perfect square. It's the same as x minus 0 squared. So we don't even have to worry about the x term here. Now all we have to do is make sure we cut that in half and square it, so we get negative 4 squared, which is 16, positive 16. Make sure you add 16 to the right-hand side as well. So now we have x squared plus these terms here will factor into y minus 4 squared equals 25. All right, so here is my equation written in standard form. If you want to write that as x minus 0 squared, be my guest. It's not wrong if you don't, and it's not right if you do. It's either one, okay? So or I shouldn't say it's not right if you do. It is right if you do it that way. Um, either one's fine, though, okay? So anyway, just to clarify, the radius here would be 5, and my center would be at 0, positive 4, okay? All right, um, that is the end of the lesson. Very nice job. I will see you guys in class tomorrow.